from the neg from a negative bench that there's a need to liberalize and and make competition and impose competition in the market because this is the spirit of the law. However, the law failed to attain uh, failed to attain that particular particular aim. That's why we are proposing a new policy. They further argue, Mr. Speaker, that there's no need to define the law. Exactly, there's no need to define a law in the current policy. That's why the affirmative bench of this debate is proposing for a regulated oil industry with a with a fair with, with a definition of comprehensive fair pricing because the absence of a standard on how to determine fair price empowers the oil companies to fix the price on the national market, not necessarily parallel to the prices in the spot market. That's why we need to define, that's why we need to have a new policy, a regulated one, with the definition of a comprehensive fair uh, price mechanism, which will work on the following grounds. First, ladies and gentlemen, there must be a consideration whether claim increases or decreases in the cost are real. Second, there must be a consideration if expenses and costs incurred are reasonable. Third, there must be a consideration of the capacity of the buying public through public hearings and consultations. Fourth, there must be a consideration on the component costs and the profit levels of the oil companies and other manufacturing companies. And fifth, there must be the ability of the buffer fund, a consideration on the ability of the buffer fund to maintain through subsidy disbursement current oil prices until the next resetting. We contend, coming from the affirmative bench, that this policy addresses the infirmities of the current law because in the current law, we can actually set into motion the policies on, on the antitrust because in the very first place, the fair price was not defined. Ladies and gentlemen, this will great, uh, th this policy will greatly benefit first, the general consumer, second, the oil companies, and third, and third the government and the government, because as reported by Ibon Foundation, the prices of oil in the Philippines are not parallel with the prices of oil in the world market. In the release of ABS-CBN News on September 22, 2010, when Dubai crude was pegged at $97 per barrel on the third week of September 2010 at the world market, the price of diesel in the local market is 49 pesos, your honors. While when the Dubai crude was at the same price in November 6 of the same year, the local price in the Philippines is at 37.95 Peter, your honors, this proves that you have the, this proves to you that the price dictated by these oil companies it not is not necessarily reflective of what is the true price in the spot market. This is based purely on speculations, ladies and gentlemen. Now, second argument: a regulated industry with a clear standard on determination of fair price will be beneficial for the government. Why? In the case of Tata versus Secretary of Energy and the Secretary of Finance, it was stated that the Constitution commits to espouse competition as reflected in Section 19 of Article 12 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, which should not be violated by any law. To ensure the inviolability of that particular provision, the crofters of the RA 84-979 integrated the antitrust provisions of the said law, which specifically enumerates cartelization and predatory pricing as prohibited acts. However, if we try to closely examine the law, definitions of cartelization and predatory pricing central on the determination whether a company exercises fair pricing or not. However, in the current law, yes, your honor. Um, are you aware whether based on experience, previous experience, the net benefit to the taxpayer of controlling prices, considering the need to have a subsidy, is actually positive? Um, your Honor, um, in the in the past in the past experience of the Philippines, there is what you call the oil salarization um, salarization oil price stabilization fund, which is being passed on the taxpayer. So, however, we prove through data in the case of the government that the government right now is actually um, bail, bailing out 4.3 billion. Okay, to, wrap it up, Rex. Um, in order to. Um, to help the poor Filipinos that are affected by the crisis. That's why it's the same story if you're going to have the oil stabilization, uh, oil price stabilization fund and with the current scenario. Okay, thank you, Rex. Ian, two minutes to cross. How much again is the price of oil in Dubai crude, according to you? In the recent data, in, 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 in September, in September 2011, it's around 87 
US dollars. Okay, as but, of the moment, as of the Do you know how much is the crude in Rotterdam, in spot market in Rotterdam? I don't have any idea. Can you please tell okay. me? That's so problematic because the Philippines is not buying oil from Dubai crude. Because if you buy crude in Dubai, that would take 12 months. And the Philippine oil companies buy from Rotterdam. So the prices are different in spot markets and country to country. Mr. Speaker, uh, the no, 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 Speaker, no, the, the source no, 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 no. is Dubai, but we buy from wait, wait, wait. Singapore because Dubai transports it to Singapore and we buy it to Singapore. Yeah, and oil paper is Singapore. oil paper is transacted from Rotterdam, New York, and Singapore. That's no, the same market. It's, it's, oh, no, let me move on to my next question. Are you familiar with the United States versus Lin Tan Hu case? No. Well, here, uh, here, uh, the the governor general at that time was given the power to define or to dictate the price of rice, and yes. it was declared unconstitutional because now the government, the, now the the president or the the executive now is given the power to define when a criminal liability is taking place. Are you familiar with that? But case? the constitution tells us. No, no, no. When you define, uh, when you define fair price, and that entails criminal liability, isn't that unconstitutional as well? Because it's an unfair delegation of powers now to the executive. No, because the mere fact that the, the no, no, yes or no? Yes, no. Just yes or no? No, of course. Okay. Now, are you familiar? No. Given the crimes provided in the oil deregulation law, in the antitrust provision, in the revised penal code, yes. what are the sufficient elements in order for a company to be uh, to be uh, criminally liable for, say, cartel or uh, uh, price uh, fixing? That's why we are proposing no, no. a new policy. Because no, it's, it's not necessary. Law, it's not necessary no, for us to fair determine pricing. the fair. Wait, because... just yes or no? It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not necessary for us to define fair price in order to prove that Shell and Petron are calling each other and dictate the fair Mr. price. Mr. Speaker, it is enough for them to collude, isn't it? Mr. Speaker, no, no, how can you write? Break it up, boys. Price if you don't have a standard. Gian, four minutes to rebut Rex and advance your argument. The problem with the government side is that they assume that fair price is a very crucial element in the crimes provided in the antitrust provision and in the revised penal code.